name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, please be seated. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. And he says, this is what you should do at the lowest, worst, bottom of your life. If you are being cast out and ridiculed and called names and victimized by rich and powerful people, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Oh, there's a caveat on that. If they're ridiculing you and calling you names and casting you out and oppressing you for his name's sake. Not just in general. <laughs> but if you love the Lord and they still hate you, and they will hate you, then rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. I tell you, there are poor people everywhere not all of them happen to be blessed. But those who have in their hearts a soul on fire with the love of God and love of neighbor, those who are, who are yearning to do the righteous work, the righteous act, that, that live their life in uprightness and seeking the mercy of God in all piety and holiness, trying to do the right thing by others, trying to set themselves on the right path, constantly seeking correction from God. Oh God, tell me the way I should walk. Show me your, my footsteps. Teach me your statutes. These are the ones who, though hated by the world, and Satan and all his minions, rejoice and be exceedingly glad to hear the reward is great in heaven. I find it very, very interesting that the first words out of his mouth to that multitude, after he had healed them, you see that he did the good work first. Christianity is not based on hot air and, and vain preaching and teachings for the sake of hearing one's own voice. You see that St. Paul was healing all those people. And you see that Jesus healed all those people. And then he spoke to them. Then he taught them. And the first thing that he said, blessed are you poor. For yours is the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm not the brightest bulb in the string. But when Jesus says something like that, I'm listening. When the first thing out of his mouth is, blessed are you poor. And when you see that the first thing that he did coming down from the mountain when he talked to those, he called his disciples, and then he healed all those people from everywhere. He didn't say, well, who's your mother? Uh, who's your father? Uh, let's see, all you ones who are... Uh, Jews and righteous uh, over here. All you other ones, uh, I'll go over there. No, he healed them all. Indiscriminate healing. How about it? Without bias, without prejudice, without preconceived ideas, just with pure love for human beings. Out of compassion for human beings. They didn't ask them any, any questions, no qualifying, uh, no rituals to enact before he, they received this, no formalities whatsoever. They came to him in earnest. They wanted to touch him. They wanted to feel his energy for great power flowed from him. Great power. He said, well, that power could have 
slain all those devils and sent them back to hell. Could have. So why does he choose this other world? Because he created human beings to be self-determinative, free-thinking, free-willed individuals who will come to glorify the Father of their own decision. Not because something is done to them. Well, it's true. As I pray these prayers here at the altar, you know, we're praying for those uh, martyrs. And what martyrs am I praying for? You know, when Jesus was born, you know that they had to escape from Bethlehem in order to go to Egypt because Herod well, had commanded the army to go out and slay every male child under the age of two years old. Rip them from their mother's arms and slay them with the sword. A bloodletting. A feast of evil. A worship service to Baal. The blood seeking to make the Son of God a sacrifice to Satan. Didn't work, did it? But all of those who are all of those who were run through with a sword were born for a purpose. And you say, was that the purpose? Was to be slain and sacrificed to Baal in contrast to the birth of the Holy Son of God? The pure soul. What about all those uh, people that were, that were the Jews that were called out and slain and burned in the furnaces of Auschwitz? Bergen-Belsen, Dachau. What about them? Is their purpose to simply offer their blood at the hands of Satan? Is it punishment for sin? No. It's a punishment for sin. Pardon, pardon, pardon. Pardon. So that's it, please. What about the 18 million, 18 million poor African American children that should have been born? but were slain in the womb since 1971 in American inner cities. What about blood cult, sacrifice to Satan? And now, after 50 years of fervent prayer of Christians, fervently praying that God would intervene. And he said, well, it's your business, it's your laws, and it's your courts, and it's your people. You want my mercy, and yet you're sacrificing your own children to Satan? Is that what you're paying for, my mercy, because you're continuing to allow this murder to happen in my, in my midst, in my sight, the same as they did to the two-year-olds and under, the babies in Bethlehem, and all of Judea, not just Bethlehem, all of them. No. 
So now, I think we have a chance, don't you? Since yesterday afternoon, all abortion clinics in the United States are closed for business. So the bloodletting of life created by God, regardless of the circumstance, sacrificed for a cottage industry of body parts and blood, profit on the, on the murder of those innocents, can stop. And yes, when you see people jumping up and down and breaking windows and throwing rocks and screeching at the top of their lungs, realize that that is an exorcism. That possession is coming out. It's coming out from those people who, have, who are saying, I wish I could kill another baby. I wish I could kill another 10, 15, 108, another 18 million. That's coming out. That's the demonic forces. You heard that Jesus healed it, cast out those demons. And we have been casting them out for 50 years. Fifty years. Now, well, hopefully they're out. You know what it is about demons. Once they are expelled, they hang around looking for something else to go torment. And so the Christian world today is rejoicing like never before. Because God has said, blessed are you poor. And who is more poor than an innocent life in the womb? <laughs> Yet to be have a chance to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. I know I'm, people are very upset when they say we have a constitutional right to an abortion. Well, I have read that constitution many times, forwards and backwards. I've read it. I did not see anywhere in there or anything where any woman has a right to kill any baby. That's your right. I don't see it. On the contrary, I see where it says each person endowed with life by God has a right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And these rights shall not be infringed. I take it a step further and I can clearly see, and this is not politics, not preaching politics from this pulpit. I can clearly see, however, uh, a satanic attack on a whole population of people. A whole population of people. Many of you here are among that population. Where in 1965, in order to get the Voter Rights Act through and passed, and then Johnson had to enact a program called the Great Society, whereby all the African American poor people in America were brought into, like the Indians on the reservations, they were brought right downtown in the center of everything, in every city in the country. And they were made, they gave them free food, free housing, free medical, and trapped them right there in dependency. And of course they quickly drafted the men and sent them off to Vietnam. When they came back, they couldn't live with their own wives, they couldn't live with their own children, and they had not been able to do so. A complete, a complete attack on the family unit of that population. Couple that with that, because they targeted this whole, this whole thing about killing of unborns. 
was targeted at that population of poor black Americans. The person who set it up was an unthoughtful racist who hated black people. Margaret Simon, very her. This satanic priesthood, uh, priest, priestess of the occult, who set up this whole abortion on demand thing to target the population. So when you see that this is now done, thankfully, gratefully, after prayers for 50 years by righteous and well intended Christians, the mouths maybe turn the page on this not just for this particular issue, but for the whole idea of bring the Indians off the reservation, bring the, bring the African Americans out of the projects, and, and, and empowerment of people through knowledge and self-determination and freedom from this tyranny and all the traps. This is my prayer. And Jesus says, blessed are the poor for the kingdom of God is yours. I hear that, and it resonates deeply within me. So much so that I personally have kind of devoted my life to this purpose. Now we have a chance that true empowerment. With this knowledge comes a responsibility. That, okay, so the prayers to God have been answered, not by God, but from men, who now are able to then say, okay, so now we've cleared the deck of this, we're no longer following the satanic blood cult, we are, we are employing, we rededicate ourselves to you. And you say, well, what? We never heard that there was a Holy Spirit. We never even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. Well, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. And the power of Christ that comes from a right thinking to a right thinking, sane adult mind who can discern good from evil and not just by God. The true power that comes from this faith is a power that heals them all. Indiscriminate healing. Indiscriminate love. Indiscriminate uh, honor of all life. And undoes all the sins of men against men. You see it? You see the power of this gospel? You see how it can actualize you personally into an eternal being of great power, with great humility, with abundance of grace. St. Paul was an ordinary guy. He was born, his father was a tent maker. He was a tent maker. Handkerchiefs, cloths that would, that would come to get to touch a handkerchief and be healed from it because of their belief. It was not magic. And this is what we're talking about. The same power that was for those early Corinthians is the same power that's available for you in the short run. Same power, same faith, same God, same grace, abundantly. Clear your mind. The hateful things that say, yes, we want, we want the right to kill, we want the right to name, we want the right to, to let love act indiscriminate, rather than to say, let us rejoice in the life that God has given us, so that life can live abundantly, and that each person, in spite of their, their situation they're born into, can be able to pursue life and liberty and happiness. Okay.
thank you very much. Okay.